GeoLayers has a handful of map imagery profiles, including premium options from MapTiler. If, however, you're looking for a free option where you don't really have to worry about licensing problems, check out the Universal Raster option. If you can't see it, go to the Preferences and turn on the visibility here. FYI, this profile is designed for small-scale maps, meaning you can't zoom in really far without it starting to get pixelated. In fact, you can't zoom past a level 5 without overriding this feature manually in the Preferences. Layer styles give you complete control of how After Effects will draw out your map features from the GeoLayers panel. You can use layer style presets or create your own custom ones. Once created, you can export your custom presets to share with other animators. You can also automatically generate a new set of layer style presets via an image or Adobe Swatch Exchange file import. Or if you've done a lot of tweaks to your map composition, you can click this button right here and create styles based on the current composition. I really love this technique because it produces three sets of five colors. You have one for polygons, points, and lines. Super cool. So finding geodata can be difficult, especially if you're working on historical projects and you want to find really old political boundaries. So one source I like to use is the historical base maps repository on GitHub. You can actually connect this repository directly to the GeoLayers panel in the preferences. Once connected, you'll be able to search and download these data sets within the search panel. If you want to learn how to do this step by step, check out my standalone tutorial, which again is linked in the video description. One of the more powerful features instead of GeoLayers is the ability to style via feature properties. Now, when creating a new layer style, you can do this via the cogwheels next to parameters. An even better way to do this is to grab a feature collection and then view the feature properties. When we look at the ranges here off to the right, you can see create new data-driven style. Now you can specify what parameter you want to style with this data and then manually adjust your value ranges. Label templates are located within a subfolder of your GeoLayers 3 items folder, right there in the project panel. To apply a label template in the GeoLayers panel, you'll see a drop down menu right here. If you want to add a new template, simply scroll down and click on the Add Template button. And as you can see here, this adds a new composition to your label templates subfolder, and you can customize it as you wish. Basically, any composition that you throw into this folder will show up in the GeoLayers panel as a label template. To learn more, check out the standalone tutorial, link in the video description. To get a reference map onto your GeoLayers map, you'll need to geo-reference it. Simply import the image and use the Puppet Pin tool to align it to the base map. Be sure that you parent the image to the map comp anchor and turn on the 3D switch, otherwise the image will be thrown out of alignment when you move the map. Now you can use it to trace elements or simply as your new base map. So if you like both textures and long zooms, GeoLayers can be a bit of a pain. There is, however, a map comp imagery profile called Seamless Texture, where you can tile your texture imagery. And this really works well if you're using subtle textures. If you want to learn how to create your own seamless textures using Adobe Photoshop, check out my standalone tutorial on this topic. Again, link in the description. Now, if you're working with a lot of data in your feature browser, it can be difficult to find things. You can filter your map features quickly via the data values of your feature properties. For example, let's say I only want to see a region of the states in the US. In my feature properties, I have a field for region. So I'll simply type the name of this data field into the filter bar here, followed by an equal sign, and then the value of the property, and voila, filtered. Heads up that this is case sensitive. Also, if you click on the field name in the feature properties, it will auto copy it to your clipboard. If you really want to master GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. With over four hours of content, I really threw absolutely everything I know about this tool into the course. It's really cool, so I urge you to go check it out. One of my favorite things to do instead of GeoLayers is to create custom map features. So if I grab the pen tool and just create like a custom shape over here directly on the map, and then click on Add Features to Browser and select Feature from Layer. That's going to give me this new geo-referenced map feature. And if I click on Feature Properties, it gives us some pretty cool information, like the area in square meters and square miles, also the circumference. Very, very cool. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you can create two features that are kind of like overlapping with each other right here and I can go ahead and create a new map feature from this second layer. And now with two map features here, if I shift and grab both of them, you have a couple of tools that you can use down here. So I could click merge features and create an all new map feature here with these merged, or I can grab them both 
and click on subtract lower feature. So it's gonna knock out shape two from shape one and leave us with this map feature. I use this particular tool set all the time to like get perfect coastlines or if I'm doing like some kind of invasion map where there's some area that's been taken over, you can simply create an entirely new map feature. Very, very fun. Many map features consist of multi-polygons. For example, if I download the country map feature of the United States, it's just one map feature, but you can see we have Alaska, all these little islands, we have Hawaii. So if we wanna split these up, let's say we just wanna use the lower 48 as one polygon. With the map feature selected, come down here and click on split feature, and it's gonna give you this feature collection, and now you're gonna have all these individual polygons split out. And it usually will give you the largest polygon at the top, and then all the way down to the smallest. So this will consist of all of these little islands. So just be aware of that. By default, feature collections will not be sorted by name, which is really annoying. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I search the United States again, and I grab the states and provinces, feature collection and add it to the browser. Now you can see I've got all the states here, but they're not organized. That is super frustrating. So all you gotta do is with the collection selected, click on feature properties. And then right here you have a checkbox that says sort features by name. You can also use this name features by drop down menu if you wanna change the name to a different data field. So I'm gonna apply this and now voila, I've got these all alphabetized and properly sorted. If you're working with a lot of point data, you can use polygons to isolate these. So here I have a global data set of populated places on Earth. So let's say I wanna focus on just populated places in Mexico. Well, I can download the country boundary of Mexico and then just shift select both of these features. And then right here, I can click on this that says points inside of polygons. And then right here, points inside polygons. This will generate some new map features here, including basically a duplicate of Mexico, and now a feature collection of these points that are only located inside of Mexico. You can see it even gives us this point count here, 189 populated places. So map comps are the basic building blocks of a GeoLayers project, and to really harness the power of GeoLayers, you should be using multiple map comps. So to add a second map comp, simply click on the settings right here, and then click on create new map comp. Now you can link the second map comp to your existing one if you want it to follow along with the animations, or you can leave it unlinked if you're doing something like creating a locator map or an inset map. You can use multiple map comps to do some pretty crazy compositing, or if you'd like to isolate a country or bring down the brightness of a background, it's really limitless what you can do. Finalizing your map comp imagery in geo layers can be pretty time intensive. By default, if you click the finalize button, it will finalize the imagery for your entire composition, the entire duration. There are a few shortcuts, however, to speed this up. For example, if you hold the control key and click finalize, it will do just one individual frame, which is super helpful when you're working on a lot of different areas of your composition. You can also jump into the preferences right here and specify to only have it finalize the containing comps work area. I set this and just leave it and then adjust my work area right here, which is really a super fast and efficient way to work. Now, if you wanna draw shapes directly on your map, the best way to go about this is to first click on this little button right up here in the top right-hand corner of the GeoLayers panel. It says create shape layer to draw on. If you click on this, it will automatically add a shape that's set to 3D and attached to your map. And it also automatically activates the pen tool. So now all you really need to do is start to draw out your shape on the map and it will indeed follow along and stick to the bearing and pitch changes. As you can see down here, it's already set to 3D and it's already attached to the map comp anchor. So now we have the shape and if I adjust the rotation or do anything on the map, the shape is gonna follow along and stay attached to the map. Beautiful. To add data fields to a feature or feature collection, you can export your feature properties to a CSV file. Once exported, you can bring it into your spreadsheet application of choice. In this example, I'm using Google Sheets. Now I can add a column here in Google Sheets and then download this as a new CSV file, which I can then re-import back to attach to my feature and voila, super duper powerful. There are a handful of times I've been asked to use a custom icon or image as a north arrow of a map. To do this, simply import your image and position it where you want in the composition. Then grab both the image and the map comp anchor layers and hit the R key. This will bring up the rotation parameters. Now you can parent the orientation of the image to the map comp anchor and voila, custom north needle. 
Last but not least, I want to talk about the premium map tiler subscription plan that you can get with GeoLayers 3. This not only gives you a license to use the map imagery in your commercial projects, but it also opens up features directly in the GeoLayers 3 panel. Not only can you get things like water mass comp and 3D buildings, but you can also customize your base maps. Once again, you'll find a link to a standalone video on this topic down in the video description.